seeing you in five years. I'm going to ask you what you've been up to because I know there's a lot of fabulous, exciting things that your fans are um, waiting to see you do. Yeah. Um, but before we talk about that, let's go back to 2009 when you and I met. Yes. Do, you, do you recall when we met, you were um, invited to Anoki's um, award show, Most Promising Musical Artist of the Year. Thank you you. deserved that. You are a really interesting um, personality for me because when I listened to your music, I was shocked that there was no element in there that was of any South Asian you know, bend. Mm -hmm. Yet, at that time, music was heavily um, you know, embossed with South Asian um, sounds and beats yeah, and South things Asian that a lot of the South, yeah. South Asians were doing at that time. Yeah. Why did you decide to do, quote unquote, music that was off the beaten path? I actually, there was no decision. Yeah. <laughs> it was just uh, music that I wrote and I'd grown up with. And um, it wasn't doing music because I wanted to do music. It was music is a part of everything that, that I do and it just comes out naturally and so uh, saying oh I'm gonna write a song because it's got some South Asian beats to it or oh I'm gonna put some whatever African beats in my song uh, it wasn't really about that it's just you know I have lyrics and I have feelings and those feelings need to be you know encapsulated into a single succinct song I feel like with just any artistry and getting out there as an artist and creating that loyalty with people that listen to your respect what you do, you need that critical mass. And that critical mass usually comes from um, people around you, your family, your friends. But when I think about that critical mass, I, th I think it makes sense that, you know, I grew up in Pakistan for a little while, I grew up in Saudi Arabia for a little while, I identify with those people a lot. But at the same time, you know, I've been in Canada for 20 years, and so I identified there as well. And so, you know, there's a really interesting melting pot of this critical mass of people. But you know what's really important, I think, at the end of the day, is that you're doing music from um, a place that makes sense to you. And the place that makes sense to you is that kind of soft rock alternative kind of sound. Yes. I, I mean, I remember when I first heard about you, 2009. I want to go back there again. It's, it's such an um, indelible, marked um, year for me when it com when it comes to you because number one it was when we first met of course I mentioned to you the um, award show when we had you come out and yes. perform well, how can I forget that absolutely tremendous and love <laughs> that and um, but it was a year that you also performed alongside John Mayer right so talk to me about that experience well first I want to go back to the 2009 experience with you because and and I feel this now too just coming here and being in your presence I feel like there's a different side of me that you or the UC. And I remember 2009, hey Zamir, why don't you come out to the show? Why don't you jump in this limo? You know, no biggie. Why don't you come over and hang out with these people that just won an Oscar for their movie? Slumdog. Slumdog Millionaire. And for me, that was, you know, it was huge. You were one of the few people back then that, that recognized what I was trying to do and respected it. And so for me, I feel like I have a like, lifelong connection to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to correct you, not what you were trying to do, what you were and are doing. Yes. The other really interesting thing about you, which I find really, really great, is the fact that you just aren't stuck within labels in terms of the kind of music or, or, or what the voice is or the creativity with which you need to, you know, put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little, about, a, a little bit about your music. You have this new album that's coming out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 10 brand new songs, you've got collaborations that are just as diverse as you are as an artist. I mean, Pakistani fabulous legendary brand, yes. uh, Nori, yes. all the way to Canada's like major pop star, Mia Martina. How, how did all this come about for you? Was it like strategically planned or did these songs just organically happen and you thought to yourself, you know what, these are the kinds of people that I want to participate on these specific tracks. Yeah. Take me through that creative process. It was actually really organic. Um, and, uh, and and part of that mix of all these crazy people that are actually singing and, and being part of this album, I do want to mention Gavin Brown, who's an incredible 12 times Juno. 12 times Juno. He's actually been the overseer. We don't go out there and try to, you know, 
sell out or find a, find a brand or really, we don't start from the business and we're back. It starts from the music. So that's why I say it's been, been really organic. The Mia Martina, the Tragically Hip, you know, Ali Noor on the album has really just been, you know, as we go along, this song sounds good. Somebody hears it, somebody hears it. I was like, hey, you know, Zamir, you need to talk to Mia. This is like a perfect song for her. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fantastic. Let's, let's work on that. Gavin's like, hey, you know, this is a perfect song for, for Johnny from the track play. We're going to have him on the song. I'm like, well, that's great. I think it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So it didn't really start from, oh, we got to do this because the album's going to sell. Uh, we got to do this because it's right for the artists. It's just been very organic for me. And that, the first song, Shut the World Out, really is, um, encapsulates that for me, you know, even just in everything we did about it. When you watch the video, you can absolutely tell that you guys had a great time. The vibe and energy and the sound all just beautifully aligned in this video. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That, that's exactly what we were trying to do. So that's what, you know, the song can catch us that's called Shut the World Out. It really is about pushing away all the boundaries around you, pushing away everything that kind of restricts you from being who you are, mm -hmm. and to move beyond that and just be um, uh, yourself. So this was kind of like a cathartic um, album for you, in some sense. I mean, you talked a little bit about, I mean, you touched a little bit on the fact that this is, you know, this has been quite a journey for you over the uh, last few years. Talk to me a little bit about in what way you went through, um, you know, hardships that, you know, you obviously have been working through and you've overcome. And as an um, eminent artist, you, you, you put pen to paper, you put music to um, recording, and you've created this magnificent album. It started off with definitely with some sort of conflict. So after the first album, back in 2009, 2010, I never got into music to be a salesperson. That's never why I got into it, and that's not what I want to be. And so there's a big part of me that went through a realization that, um, you know, I need to focus on what I'm good at and figure that out. Uh, I can be that salesperson and go around and try to sell my music, or I can be the artist and, and just try to write the music, or I can be the person that just kind of feels and writes a song and somebody else sings it for me. I, I came to the understanding that I am simply an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm a songwriter and I sing. Uh, and beyond that is not my domain. And that beyond that is not what I want to get involved in. You're one of those artists that I've noticed from your music that I've been following you, is that you always create something that's off the beaten path, right? It's you're not a bandwagoner. So I think I, I think that you know we all do as people. You know when people call us and say, "Listen, I, I want you to perform here, or I want you to do um, this," and it happens to be all kind of geared towards um, a certain niche. Right, in this case, it happened to be the South Asian Sea in Canada at that time, five yeah. years ago. Um, we do get kind of pulled. We get pulled into all of this because this is where you're getting the recognition from. This is where people are, um, you know, idol, um, idolizing you. This is where you get, you know, you're making and your you're, initial and you're money. Thankful. And yeah, you're absolutely. Thankful, yeah. And you're very blessed. But if it doesn't align with the core mandate of why you are playing music and why you are creating the kind of music that resonates with you, then you do get the sense of feeling lost. I feel almost like you needed to get away from Canada to refine who it is that you know you are as an artist. Yes, yeah? that's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you, yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. That, that, uh, that was a journey. And, and being in LA, apart from the good weather and all that stuff, um, it has I live in a really secluded place in LA too, so I'm I'm writing and I'm recording a lot, and I'm just kind of been with myself the last year. Um, but yeah, it being able to see all that now from a distance and understand exactly what happened uh, and how and what to appreciate from it and what not to appreciate from it, and how to uh, you know make things better moving forward. And you know, I think that um, you know people are going to be just greatly surprised um, as to this new album that you got coming out. Even those people who have been following your style of music, your genre of music, that you know the kind of stuff you put out historically, I, I believe they're going to be surprised um, with this new album. Talk to me a little bit about what are the different elements on this album from what you've done historically speaking. Most of the shows that I've done are all singer-songwriter, coffee shop type shows. I take my guitar and I just sing in really quiet, ambient type places. And that's what I fell in love with. Uh, I've been doing that for the last you know, 10 or 15 years. Uh, so that is a core of the sound. Um, the album that I put out uh, four years ago 
had elements of that as well, but it also, you know, just discovery. It was my first album, just kind of figuring a lot of the stuff out. It was self-produced. Uh, now I have more oversight. I have people that kind of recognize and see through the artist that I am. But I think you'll see me go more into that really organic acoustic guitar, vocal, songwriting state uh, more than in Kripir's album. What do you hope to do next? You, I know that you need to promote the album, you need to get it out there in um, as many people's hands as possible. What are you, what are you, how are you planning on doing that process? What I'm going to do with this album and how I'm going to get it heard, uh, I, you know, going back to, I am an artist. I'm a songwriter and a singer. And that's what I focus on. So I'm going to hand it off to somebody else to, to drive that. Of course, I'm going to be involved, but uh, that's not what my specialty. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I, you know, the supporters that I have, um, I you know, connect with them. Previously, it was more for the listeners. Now, it's for me, and it begins with me, and making sure that where it's coming from, where these thoughts and feelings and emotions are coming from, are real, and that realness and authenticity is maintained throughout. And I think that, you know, following your heart, sweetheart, is the best gift that you can give to your fans. Thank you so much Thank you. for the time that you've taken to come out. I absolutely adore you. Can't wait for this album that you're going to give me. And you know that I'm going to be listening to this and I can't wait to tell you what I think about it. i got a feeling I'm going to get a lot of who you are out of the album. Mm -hmm. And I want, to, I, want to, I want to talk to you after that about who I think you are I from listening to, to the I album. Would love to, I would love to talk to you anytime. Honestly, let's not let's, let's not let five years go by again. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Thank you so much for coming and chatting with me. me. And I wish you all the best for the album. It's going to be great. If, if anyone that doesn't get it out there, I mean, they are going to miss out on a journey of a lifetime because that's really what you've had in the few years that you have been off the face of the world for me. And I'm glad that you're back. Thank you.